So this um, it's making the case for gender specific diabetes care. And I only hope I am 10% as passionate and convincing as Archana, who spoke about type 1 diabetes, put that talk on steroids. And that's what we need for all of women and diabetes. Really, it's such a big problem because globally, like 50% of the women, 50% um, of the people with diabetes are women. Um, so in India, it's somewhere in the to the tune of 35 to 40 million people. And just to put that in perspective, that is the popula entire population of Canada. And so, I mean, we have a very significant problem. And just to, you know, say thanks where it is due, uh, in 2017, the International Diabetes Federation uh, made the theme as women and diabetes, our right to a healthy future. That's really when the whole thing got truly validated and pushed on the global agenda. So this was an editorial in The Lancet. said on November 14th this year, the focus of World Diabetes Day is women and diabetes, our right to a healthy future. With ever-increasing evidence that diabetes adversely affects women more than men, this timely theme will help to boost awareness of the need for specific approaches for prevention and care and treatment and education. This year's theme is edu education to protect tomorrow. And as you all know, I have added a tagline that says the future is her because truly the future is her when you're talking about, you know, girl children and, and, and transgenerational transfer of uh, you know, everything we have been talking about and, and uh, you know, the role of women, everything, including economy. So the future is her. And, and so I'm very grateful for this editorial that put the thing. And, um, and I think we should uh, really make it clear at this point that any discussion on gender specific guidelines or when we are talking about women and diabetes, it's not a kiss versus her. It's not a, a, some battle of the sexes or a feminist issue. It's a hardcore medical issue, hardcore public health issue. Um, so that's what we are talking about and, and nothing else. And like everything else, COVID pandemic has really hurt Though it caused more COVID in 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 men, um, it caused more COVID-related problems in women. One of the big things is pushing women and girls into extreme poverty. Forty-seven million more people, and that's true for you know our country, and and that's why I, I um, Archana's talk is uh, super relevant today. And you take all NCDs. What has happened is the COVID-19 pandemic, the lockdown and everything else that came along with it has rolled back a lot of the progress and uh, and watch out. There's going to be a huge uptick in all NCDs. Already we are having uh, reports about GDM having gone higher in some countries, diabetes being higher in countries. So when, when the dust settles down, as they say, we're going to see a lot. And as I mentioned right at the beginning, now the most powerful engine of global growth, forget all the other things, really need to, um, you know, focus and invest uh, in girls and women. And when it comes to um, women and diabetes and the importance of gender, the experience of diabetes is different in women. More serious adverse outcomes in women and the life cycle of women is different and the Socio-cultural economic context is different, um, and um, you know, just one. So, gender-specific research and technology, which we have heard about, is lagging behind, and gender inequities in healthcare. And, and need to view this whole one size. This whole one size fits all. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. All that has to be put to bed. We need to view therapeutics with the gender lens because we are learning more and more how each medication can be, you know, work differently in men, work differently in women, and and cause different problems. You give a woman metformin or a TZD, she could start ovulating. Someone who was not ovulating and and have a, a unintended uh, pregnancy, and and Shalini so 
um, you know, eloquently, elegantly showed the risks of um, having unintended, unplanned pregnancies. So, and and gender mainstreaming. So, no more gender neutrality, uh, not acceptable. No more being gender agnostic. No more being, you know, all is equal. It's not equal. We need gender mainstreaming and need to be really gender sensitive in everything we do. So a ton of misconceptions about diabetes being more prevalent in men caused by the same, same genetic environmental factors. Heart disease is a man's disease. Um, diabetes care is ignored by women. All diabetes is the same. All women are a monolith, same. All treatments work the same way. You know where I'm going. None of this is true. So very quickly, I want to show you 50% of the people in the world with diabetes are women. And the little difference that is there between men and women is shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. And very soon we are going to outnumber. The lifetime risk of diabetes is higher in women globally and in India. And you look at the drivers of diabetes, the, besides the usual urbanization, globalization, obesity is more in women. And this pregnancy and GDM and PCOS and metabolic changes during menopause and um, women who have you know low birth weight themselves being at risk for future GDM and 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 diabetes and if a mother has diabetes her daughter has greater risk for GDM like mother like daughter which is Dr. Yagnik has you know used that recently and caregiving and stress are big issues for women. And I want to congratulate Anjali on a very difficult, navigating a difficult topic. But I want to also add here, you take diabetes, women have two times more uh, diabetes-related uh, uh, depression and complications, I mean, depression in, in women. So <clears throat> are these differences a function of biology, life cycle, social determinants of health, or behavior? Short answer, all of the above. There are physiologic and pathologic sex differences, pregnancy and life cycles like that causes gestational, which man has to gain about 10 kilos or 15 kilos um, during a pregnancy and then work hard to get rid of that, do the breastfeeding part, lose sleep. I mean, imagine the the the, the beating um, our body takes. It's a it's, uh, most beautiful kind of a journey but it's a beating nevertheless so this is um, you know some gestational weight gain retention all of that leading to um, metabolic complications later and it's not completely you know let's take some blame for it as well we tend to be less physically active more sedentary pursuits part of it of course is cultural and then the big social determinants of health everything from housing and education and social support systems and access to healthcare and, you know, things like pollution, which is um, now increasing the risk of diabetes and, 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 and heart disease. So not only all this increased risk, more women are dying in every continent except North America when they have diabetes. And that's a very strange thing. And why is that so? And it's been shown whether it is coronary artery disease, stroke, um, vascular dementia, uh, end-stage renal disease, and more recently, cancer, um, you know, more uh, the, the sex differences are very obvious, that 27% more cancer in women with diabetes compared to women without. But the thing is this, just look at this picture, and that is the essence of my talk, because that women could have heart disease or mental health issues or fractures or um, cancer is not in our radar. When we think of women, we only think of pregnancy. So this narrow vision of women's health from a just a, a reproductive angle has, I think, really what has hurt us in a big way. And if you see here, all this is wrong. The only thing they've shown is a woman is pregnant. So um, we need to change that. So as you can see, more heart disease and non-traditional risk factors. Lily has beautifully gone through this, that we have to keep be cognizant of GDM and hypertensive heart disease, hypertensive disorders, preterm delivery, miscarriages, 
infertility everything is um, is and low birth weight are all risk factors for heart disease in women and pregnancy should start be viewed as a window to future chronic disease which is you know things like diabetes and heart disease the symptoms are different heart failure is different in women compared to men the type of heart failure but more heart failure in in women but unfortunately under studied under recognized under diagnosed under treated under represented in clinical trials just now i saw a tweet this uh, yesterday that showed that in a in a in a big study hardly represented women were in a heart failure study so stroke is more common in women um, fractures more common in women the in diab data showed that's from india after gender stratification diabetes was a risk factor for fracture only in women we start need to start looking at bone health mental health cancer all of these things as complications of diabetes only then we'll start looking for them and only then we'll start screening for them just wanted to show you this whole mental health and diabetes this whole diabetes distress we know is a very big problem and could be a huge problem for women because they're already overwhelmed with care care caregiving and other responsibilities imagine add to that eating the right thing eating on time taking medications being physically active going to the doctor affording medications coping with all of that planning a pregnancy uh, you know talk about adding so much so when it comes to gestational diabetes i know that's not the scope of this talk but just want to say that's a taken a vishwa roop of its own globally particularly in our country and we need to really start focusing on young people primordial prevention and uh, talking to you know high school girls and college girls and young working women and just married people we need to really target this group about how to prevent this because once they become pregnant um as they say the horse is out of the barn and we can't do a whole lot because we really can't people on a super strict diet we know all the uh, the complications that happen because of gdm more diabetes in them more diabetes in their offspring recurrence in the subsequent pregnancy more cardiovascular disease obesity and visceral adiposity in their offspring speaking of this adiposity women just seem to have more obesity and therefore why gender specific guidelines are needed is also i also want to say um you know say thanks here to penny neglur who's been a great champion in this um in 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 pushing for this gender specific guidelines so we need to be avoiding medications that can promote obesity and and looking for things that are either weight neutral or actually help with with weight loss in women who have issues with with weight and you know I, one more thing that we I, you know i want to mention is this whole high burden of pre diabetes and and um, in in our country and if you look at the 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 broken blue blue dotted lines those are, that's pre diabetes in women enormous amount 30% 40% pre diabetes in in young women which all will change to diabetes going forward so why it is so important that we have gender specific guidelines even for something like pre diabetes because that is really um in there are sex differences that there are uh, that in endothelial function before conversion to pre diabetes so the clock does seem to start ticking earlier among women and one of the most beautiful explanations is that it takes about 2 years for women to accumulate the the amount of fat and in that 2 years they are now then developing all the cardiovascular and other metabolic um you know markers and 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 complications that sets them up for higher risk for heart disease so what are the solutions let us really really focus on our young women before they become pregnant so pre conception care i'm not talking about pre gdm care or or g or gdm care or anything i'm talking about the normal women screen them for diabetes screen them for pre diabetes screen them for nutritional issues and and um, you know watch out this space we are coming out with a program called be ready 
will be launched very soon a simple 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 um, uh, questionnaire that women can take and at the end of it they get a, a report card on if they are ready for the walking into the most beautiful journey of their life so that's one solution we need to make sure our mothers weight is good and the baby's weights are good because as you can see birth weight is linked to both diabetes metabolic syndrome in women and their own birth weight is linked to the risk of gdm in them and we also know what happens you know the developmental origins of disease at every stage of life it has a, a huge outsized role to play and so we need to make sure pregnancies are healthier um we need to have a very gender informed perspective about care of people with diabetes what will happen to an older woman uh, you know it should if she is put on let's say tzds um, could she have a can uh, fracture uh, should we be screening them for uh, cancer uh, breast cancer uh, endometrial cancer oh, oral cancer colorectal cancer uh, all of these things are high in women with diabetes the pillars of diabetes management are same but we need to always look at things with that gender lens so this is what the ada esd gave out no mention anything anywhere about gender and all that we are saying is <laughs> apply the gender lens look at women as are they in their reproductive years are they planning a pregnancy then ask them to follow the pre gdm guidelines um if they are not planning a pregnancy but they are let's say they are not uh, sexually active pregnancy is possible then make sure that contraception is prescribed preconception care is recommended to them but if they are using contraception or pregnancy is not possible then make sure that they get the good lifestyle modification good control bp control lipid control glucose control weight management stress reduction surveillance all of those good things but if they are peri or post menopausal make sure if they are peri menopausal you assess uh, make sure they you know their gu symptoms are not confused with a with a uti um, that they have you know their lipid profiles are are, are managed should they or should they not get medicate things like a hormone therapy that has to be weighed because women with diabetes can get uh, high triglyceride issues or they may be at risk for um uh, you know um, thromboembolic events so we need to be very careful about that if they are post menopausal always make sure cv risk bone health mental health cancer screening very very important gu health all this we have to pay attention to them now when it comes to women there are two or three things they may you know unless they understand why the medication is being given and unless they can afford it okay gender differences in medication non adherence uh, more in women because they may not be able to um, afford it or or some side effects are bothering them so always have to look at it and we have to consider a patient perspective all the time what is it that bothers them what in which stage of her life is she and what is worrisome to her can she afford this and um in 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 women we really have to you know start early and and stay persistent throughout because as you can see from normal glucose tolerance exposure to risk factors by the time they may have a longer diagnostic delay and then screening for vascular complications that may be delayed it may be health system issues so we have to make sure that we do both primary and secondary prevention and we should use our frontline health workers and i think um, um, uh, archana mentioned this our asha and anganwadi workers are our great resource if their capacity can be built on this they am sure can be our um, you know messengers in this big 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 um, you know uh, battle that we are uh, you know that we have entered um, and successful models in the world like the go red for women which is purely um, a empowerment program how successful it has been um, my last thing i want to say is we've been trying to fit a round peg into a square hole um, all along and we know that doesn't work and we really need to have a a very um, you know gender um, sensitive gender appropriate um and in gender mainstreaming in in medicine in all in general 
and in in diabetes care in in particular and uh, thank you all so much